Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to our Top 5 Friday Ski Industry News videos. Another fun week here at Stowe. Yeah, it was like either snowing or sunny every day. Yeah, we had great, great week. Great conditions this yep. week. Like powder day after powder day. Right. And then it's going to rain on Sunday. Well, it's <laughs> follow suit with the rest of the season. So. Yeah, and, and it looks like some snow on the back end of that. So I think we'll come out of it just fine, just like we did last time. Yeah, but like... We've had, what, six thaws this year? It's been a thaw-heavy <laughs> season, but we've recovered really well every time. Yeah, so. and it hasn't really stopped us from getting up there either, so that's no. that's the big part. The best part of the ski season is still to come, Bob. Yeah, I'm a big fan of April skiing. Late March, April, real fun. Yep. Sun's a little higher. You noticed that today. Right, yeah, warms up your car. Warms it's up the, the very top of the snow surface. Yep. It's a little softer, even on those really firm days. Yeah. Help, helps a ton. Oh, it's great. March and April, time to ski. Yep. So hopefully you guys are getting out and enjoying skiing, wherever that is closest to you. Yeah. Um, and with that, we can get straight into this week's news. Um, back to normal ski racing news. You know, where Olympics are done, back to World Cup. Yep. Um, we had a women's downhill in Switzerland. Uh, Breezy's still out, of course. Uh, but Keely Cashman and Isabella Wright picked up 28th and 30th, respectively. Uh, and the next day, Isabella cracked the top 10. All right. Slipping right there in the 10th. Yep. Um, so great results for them. Uh, the men were in Germany for slalom. Uh, ben Ritchie picked up a 20th as the only, only, only male to earn points in these recent races. Um, so that brings us to two articles on SkiRacing.com. Um, the first that addresses intentions to continue to examine the U.S. in a critical light following their lackluster performance at the Olympics. Really just firing up the complaint department after the Olympics here with yeah, Ski they, Racing Magazine they, and related articles. They're like getting criticism. pretty serious about it, too. Yeah, they're getting a little fired up. Really it's, digging deep into yep. the analytics and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the other article on SkiRacing.com that we wanted to highlight was a response to that first article. Uh, this was a letter to the editor from Breezy Johnson defending the team, um, citing high expectations, and also citing a depth of talent in the younger generation uh, uh, among the U.S. ski team, which in the editor's response to Breezy's letter, that's kind of where they... they leaned on those analytics and were like, I don't know. Right. So pretty interesting stuff here. No, it was some good back and forth. I read, I didn't yeah. read the initial one. I read Breezy's letter and then the editor's note to <laughs> response to Breezy's article. So, yep. you know, they're, they're getting a little back and forth, which, you little, know. A little chirpy. Yeah, a little chirpy. I think it's good for discussion, good for the overall health of totally. the team. And I think they're all kind of pulling towards the same goal, uh, just unsure of the metho methodology there. Yeah, one of those situations where everyone involved wants the same thing. Right. Um, but there's still kind of, you know, not butting heads, but some disagreement there. Yeah, and I think it's hard for people to understand why, like, America isn't so awesome at ski racing, you know, with the resources and talent pool. And I think that that's for the, the casual ski racing viewer i think that's a difficult mental hurdle yeah again i'll just i'll go back to major league baseball nfl right. nba these are all drastically bigger things than right. ski racing in this country yeah. nascar right you never know i mean ra racing's racing right it's way more money in nascar racing if, right. you, if you're a u.s citizen so yeah, well, it's interesting. Maybe it'll change, but yeah, I'd say like right now, like there, and traditionally, there's not much emphasis on ski racing right. in the United States. So. Yeah, and we're very like top, like metal heavy and metal specific. Right. Whereas like I think a lot of the rest of the world is very World Cup based. Yes. You know, like they're like Olympic medals are fantastic, but they would much rather focus Have on the World Cup overall. World Cup. Yeah. So we'll see. I think this conversation will continue. Yeah. It certainly feels that way Yep, because um, everyone's pretty fired up about it. Um, and then second topic of the week, we have some Icon Pass announcements. Um, so first is pricing. So they've announced prices for next season. 
Um, these first two are for new Icon Pass holders. So if you want a full Icon Pass next year, it's going to be $1,079. That's an $80 increase. Um, if you just want the base path, pass, ba base pass, <laughs> I don't know why that's hard for me to say, um, which, you know, has blackout dates, restrictions, stuff yeah. like that. Um, it's $749, which is a $40 increase. Uh, now, returning customers have some incentives. Um, you will get a $100 discount off a full pass and a $50 discount off the base pass. So even less than... Yes. what they would have had. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll get a a full pass for $979. Gosh, skiing is cheap. Cheap. I yeah. mean, like I don't want to say cheap cheap, but like the passes are inexpensive uh, for, compared to what they used to be, absolutely. And 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 compared to what you're spending for lift tickets to get the same value. Totally. You know, it's not like $1000 is a small amount of money, but you know, Based off of right. $150 lift tickets, like, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, absolutely. To buy a pass if you're going to ski six days. That's how they get you, Bob. That's how they get you. That's how they get you. It's interesting. It's a really interesting business yep. model, and it sure, sure has changed since, like, we were kids. Yeah, I mean, even when I started skiing here at Stowe, the passes were, like, sixteen, eighteen hundred dollars $1,800. Sure. Like, it was, you know, and we got a discount through Store Area Association and brought it down to like $1,100. Right. And we were like, yes. Right. You know, but yeah, I mean, to think, to think back to my childhood, we skied a lot. Yeah. Like I easily skied every weekend and then like Wednesday nights and like probably some Friday nights too. Like I skied a lot and I didn't have a season pass until I was like, I don't know, 15, 16. Because it like didn't make financial sense for my parents, right. it was cheaper just to buy all those day tickets, right. like probably between a family of four, well over a hundred day tickets in the course of a season. That was less expensive than buying a season pass. Right. Not anymore. So, not. Not. It's like drastically yeah. different. Yeah. So pretty interesting. Um, and then they've also added three new resorts, uh, Chamonix. Pretty cool. I mean, I'd pay a thousand bucks to yeah, ski the season at Chamonix. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like makes me want to buy an Icon Pass right. and go to France. Go to France for a month. Um, and then they also got Snow Basin and Sun Valley, uh, which notably were previously Epic, not like full Epic. I think you got like a certain amount of days right. at Sun Valley and Snow Basin. Um, but I thought that was interesting that a couple mountains have have chosen to go off the Epic Pass and onto the Icon Pass. Yeah, and I'm not sure like what the nuts and bolts of being being involved in these passes are, whether they're right. paying to be on the pass and then they get the business or how that works. But there are some behind the scenes meetings that we are not invited to, Bob. I don't know if I'd even understand them. We don't we get the go. full the full pricing strategies right. here. <laughs> um, and then the third announcement from Icon Pass is a three hundred and forty four million dollar upgrade plan um, across five of their major resorts, including Deer Valley, Palisades Tahoe, which still feels weird to say. Like when I look at that, I'm like, I don't even know where that is. Oh right, yeah, we right. did it though. I mean, I can say it. Yeah, I just like, <laughs> it's, it's just funny to. Yeah, I'm still not used to calling it Palisades. Next year, it'll be part of the normal lexicon. Okay. Um, the other three being Mammoth, uh, Steamboat, and Crystal Mountain. So, Mammoth is a big place. I wonder what they're what they plan there. There's I don't some know. old. old I'd imagine they there. could spend three hundred and forty million dollars just at pretty Mammoth. quick at Mammoth. That's what I was just yeah. thinking. Yeah. Yeah. The place is huge. Um, and then that brings us to the third topic of the week. Uh, which, wow, this is our, our solution to the ski racing problem. Right. I think we've, I think we've done it. We've done it. <laughs> Bob and I have solved it. Um, Alpine X plans to bring skiing to Texas in the year 2025. Um, so Alpine X is the company that owns Big Snow American Dream in New Jersey, that big indoor skiing operation. And they have signed letters of intent to build two new indoor areas, one in Austin and one in Dallas. And, you know, they got Bodie Miller kind of leading the charge of their, yeah. you know, outreach and right. getting people hyped up on skiing. I think that convert some of these kids into totally. ski racers and get them inside running gates. And 
These are major metropolitan areas with huge populations. Yeah, I think this is going to be like this is going to be like the Cochrans of of Texas. Texas. Yeah, we'll pull some people off their future running back career and turn them into ski racers. Yeah, yeah, I think that they're that having that deep athletic pool is going to totally get some get some good good kids on skis. Yeah. So you all wait. Uh, what was this? Twenty twenty two. So twenty thirty. No. You're giving it another four years? Oh, I was going to go like 20 years. 20. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's go 20 years. So in, uh, in 2042. We're going to be, the, the American start list is going to be mostly Texans. You just wait and see, and we're going to dominate the sport yeah. in, 20, in 2042. <laughs> um, no, I thought that was cool. And Bob and I have uh, loosely committed to taking a trip to Big Snow American Dream this summer. Yeah, or Texas when it opens. Yeah, we got to wait like three awesome. years for that. I'd rather <laughs> just drive to New Jersey this summer. Um, but I would love to check it out. Yeah. And we've thought about taking some skis down there and doing some summer ski testing in Big Snow American Dream. That'd be sweet. It'd be awesome. Um, and then lastly, uh, we got a little more info on the story about Black Mountain shutting down its uphill access. Um, so this was a pretty interesting story, huh? It, Black's in New Hampshire, correct? There's it's multiple Black Mountains, but yes. But this one is in New Hampshire. Uh, yes, yeah, okay. that is at least as far as I, I hope I understand this correctly. Because there's a Black Mountain of Maine. There's a Black Mountain in Maine where I spent a whole bunch of my childhood. Yeah, and then this one is kind of in Conway area, I, believe, I think? I believe you're correct. Okay. Um, but essentially, so the, the, to tell this story, um, Ski the Whites, the organization, um, they had a basically touring rental shop at Black Mountain, they were also running an event called Friday Night Lights. Um, tensions exploded, at least that's how Matt <laughs> described it in the written article. Tensions exploded during a night, uh, a, a Ski the Whites Friday Night Lights event when the owner, the owner of Black Mountain, caught someone who had smuggled their own beer into the lodge, uh, reportedly lost his cool. <laughs> Wonder what that means. Um, called the police on that person and abruptly ended the event and all future uphill access. For day ticket owners? I, I, I just think for season everything. pass people can still go up. Okay. Um, but they're, they, I know they've ended the $10 uphill day fee. Okay. I'm not sure if the season's pass is still on or Maybe not. somebody in, uh, in New Hampshire can chime yeah. in. Um, Ski the Whites has since vacated their rental shop um, so, kind of a bummer. Yeah, I mean, they put out fair warning, though. Was it a month ago or something like that? Yeah. Where people were, uh, you know, basically trespassing. I mean, it's a private... Right. It's private property. Yeah. And people were taking advantage and right. going without paying. Right. So, there was a stern warning, and uh, they followed through with their... <laughs> right. ...with their proposal. It would be like if somebody came and just started sledding in your backyard. Right, and you'd be like, "Excuse me, like the, uh, you can't just." But even do more, that. it would be like a, it's a business. You right. know, they're like they're making money. It's theft of services. Right. So, yeah, it's worse than that. Yeah. Um, so kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and interesting to see where this uphill, uh, the policies are going to evolve in different zones because it's really there's no consistent guidelines. Nope. Uh, anywhere. And it feels like it keeps coming up week after week. Right. Like there's some new story about the same kind of issues. Yeah. So we'll see. But these things do kind of naturally find an equilibrium. Yeah. There's an ebb and flow for sure. Yep. Um, and then lastly, we have our edits of the week. Uh, first up, Stowe. Stowe kid. Stowe kid done good. Can't really call him a kid anymore, can no. you? Stowe man. Stowe man. <laughs> uh, Duncan Adams, loose ends edit. Duncan's a fantastic skier. Yeah, we were talking about him just on Yest Wednesday. Yesterday? Two days uh, ago? Two days ago. Yeah, down um, at Sugarbush. Yeah, and like, you know, I knew him when he was younger. You almost coached him. Almost coached him, very much on his own program, and, yep. and that has worked out well for him. Um, but yeah, he was, you know, a late bloomer, I, I referred to. He was a good young skier, but I wouldn't have envisioned him becoming this. Yeah, which and he's is, turned into... Probably 
one of the best and most stylish big mountain skiers yeah, in very the world. Unique, unique style for sure. Yeah. Um, and then second edit of the week, we have Auntie Olila, a faction root cut. Um, earlier I said he's your favorite pro skier's favorite skier. Yeah, pretty impressive and cool, like really awesome scenery, like this night yeah. skiing. I think it's, uh, what he's did skiing. we say, Finland? Yeah, he's like kind of known for his night skiing. Yeah, but they have like these like purple or blue like lights and they yep. reflect off the snow ghosts and it's really cool cin cinematography. Yeah, and, and amazing skiing. Yep. So check that one out. And then last edit of the week, we have Daniel Hanka and Simon Bartik in Checkmate, episode three. A little bit more park oriented. I think the first one was like more natural. Kind of a nice progression stuff. there, actually, yeah. from natural terrain to, to more park focused. Um, but gosh, four really cool skiers in this week's yep. edit, edits of the week. Um, I would say four, four of my personal favorites. A lot of faction in there, too. Yeah, a lot of faction. Uh, yeah, a lot of faction. <laughs> hint, <laughs> hint, hint. Um, yeah, we'll have some, we'll be able to talk about faction a little more. Yay. In coming weeks and, yep. and months and years. If you guys can figure out what that means, I, I hope I hope you can. I think you're like pretty I'm, clear. I feel like I made it pretty <laughs> obvious here. Uh, you guys ask about them a lot. And yeah, you're gonna see him more and more. Um, so that's it for edits of the week. Bob, big fun weekend plans? Yeah, we'll go ski in. That's a big fun weekend yeah. plan. Maybe ski in the rain on Sunday. Ski in the rain is sweet. Yeah. I'll go up there on Sunday. Be great. I think I'm gonna snowboard. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> it feels like a good, t like it'll be soft. Yep. No, soft is key. Shouldn't be too crowded. No, you'll have the place to yourself. Yep. So if you see a guy up at Stowe on Sunday in the rain struggling to snowboard, uh, maybe stop and lend him a helping hand because that'll be me. <laughs> no, I should be fine. It'll be fun. Yeah. Anyways, hope you all have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye.